Hi, this is Peter at Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com, and this is tutorial 184. Now, in our last tutorial, we went ahead and set up a little box for our uh, GUI for our hair. And let me just open up Unity, Money Develop. And if we click on it, we notice we got a, well, we're just representing it with a little box over here. And in this video, I want to go ahead and start putting in uh, the two little buttons at the bottom. So I'm going to go back into Mono Develop, and I'm going to come down to the bottom here, right underneath the on GUI function. And I'm going to create two private functions. And they do not return anything. And I'm going to call one next hairstyle. And I'm just going to copy that and make another function. And I'll just call this one previous hairstyle. And there we go. And in, inside of here is where I'm actually going to display the actual button in here. So let's actually call these functions in here. I'll just cut and paste these in. And we'll just start off by putting a box in there. And I guess technically previous logically comes first before next, at least display wise on the screen. So I'll just set that up and I'm going to represent this with the GUI button. The button is not actually going to do anything just yet. I just want to get the display right. And we're just going to say new rect. Whoops. We need a string. And since this is the previous button, I'm just going to put the little less than arrow. And we're going to need some sort of rect. Uh, right now, uh, let's just do 10. Well, Let's work it off of our offset. Or I guess what we could do is just actually make a whole new rect for it. And I'm going to come down here and make it private. It will be of type rect. And I'm just going to call this, whoops, I forgot that big B. So we'll just delete it. And I'll just call it button rect size. No, just button rect is actually fine. And I'll set that up down here. Uh, mo mostly because it's going to depend on the offset and the current position already. So we called it button rect. It's going to be equal to a new rec. And we'll just put the values in here. Ash, we don't really need to save it as a rect. We could actually fit this into something that's smaller. And that would be a vector 2. Because all we really want to know is... Uh, how wide and how high. So let's just use a vector 2. So as far as where we want to position this, we want to position, um, well, the first button uh, right on the very left-hand side. So if we start this up, uh, I'm going to get errors because I haven't finished that. But of that little box that we had that showed up, I want it down in the bottom left-hand side and I want it to extend halfway across whatever the size of that group is. So I'm going to come in here and say, take my position, which is this rect here, uh, take its width, and then minus the offset multiplied by 2, and then divide it by 2. And the part we want to divide by 2 is the actual outcome of this calculation here. And then for its y position, it's uh, well pretty much the exact same thing. So we're going to take the position, dot height, minus the offset multiplied by 2. And then we'll divide that by 2. And this really isn't a rect anymore. This is uh, going to be its size. So I'm just going to quickly refactor the name. And just call it button size. There we go. It changed it there and there for us. So I'm going to come down here. And in my rect, I am just going to cut and paste this in. Now let's see where that puts us on the screen. So it should get rid of all of our errors, or just create a bunch more. <laughs> uh, okay, that's not going to work just like that. Uh, because it's a vector 2. I originally planned on 
making it erect, but that's fine. We'll just put the values in. So the previous hair one, I want to start on the left hand side down at the bottom and I want it to be adjusted only by its offset. So I'm just going to say offset for the X and offset for the Y. I'm sorry, for, for the Y we'll want the position dot Y and then for the width we'll actually use our button size dot X and for the height we'll use our button size dot Y. There we go. So let's go back into Unity, let it recompile. All of our errors disappear. And let's start it up and it's going to show us, it's going to be inside the box and it's showing us right here. Which is not exactly where I want it. I want it down a little bit more. So let's stop that and we'll head back into our script. And this here shouldn't have actually been based on our position. It should have been based on our button size dot y. So we want to move down according to how big our, our button is. So let's start this back up. And there we go, exactly where I want it. Uh, next I want to put my, my next button. So I'll just stop that and I'm actually just going to cut and paste this line. And I'll just put it right in. And we'll just go through and adjust the offsets. So on the on the X, I want to move it uh, based on its offset plus our button width, which is button size dot X. Uh, the Y I want to be the same. Uh, everything else should be the same, uh, except for the symbol at the end here. We'll want a greater than sign. So we'll just save that off. No errors. We'll start this back up. And it should put it right beside it. There we go. Now if we actually start playing around with the offset a bit, let's make the offset, oh, five pixels. And let me just take a quick look at the box here. It is based off the offset, which I don't want anymore because I want this box to encompass all of our, uh, our group. So I'll switch these to zero so it always starts in that top left hand corner. And we'll get rid of these as well. Because like I said, I want to encompass the whole area of the group. And when I'm done, I'm actually going to be deleting the box or at least commenting it out because I don't want the box to actually display. Now, of course, you could keep the box displaying and add some sort of GUI style to it just to uh, give some sort of background image to it. But that's not what I want right now. Now, you notice by doing the offset of five, you get a nice little uh, five pixels on one side, five on the other. But the bottom isn't quite right. It moved up 10 pixels on me, so I'm going to want to change that. So let's go ahead. We'll come back in. And let's look at our constructor for the Y, uh, which is down here. And the problem is I'm using um, the button size Y in both of them. What I really wanted to use was position dot height, so the total height of our area, minus the size of our button on the Y, which is the height of our button, and also subtract the offset as well. So I'm just going to take this and I'll just cut and paste it in here. And that's what happens when you have bad coffee. <laughs> so I'm attempting to get back into Unity. Here we go. I will let it recompile. No errors popped up. Let's try it now with the 5 pixel offset. And there we go. And we'll do one more quick test. Let's do a 10 pixel offset. Well, let's do something drastic. We'll do like 20 pixel offset. And we're just going to head right back into Unity and we'll start this up. And of course, our button should be smaller and the offset should be the same around the whole thing. There we go. Uh, so the distance between here and here should be the same between here as well. And it looks about right. But I actually don't want any offset right now. So I'm going to put it back to zero. And I'm not actually going to add any functionality to these buttons yet. I'm going to wait till I get the whole GUI built up. And then we'll go come back and we'll start actually adding some functionality to them. Now keep in mind you can go ahead and style these any way you'd like uh, using your GUI styles that we've covered before. And since we're coming up close to 10 minutes right now, I'm going to call this one done. And in our next tutorial, 
Uh, we're going to start setting up the structure to change our hair colors. So if we take another quick look at what we have so far, what I'm going to try to do is create a row of buttons right at the top here for our hair colors. And of course they'll dynamically size according to the number of hair colors I have. And I've only got six, so it's not that many. If I had uh, like several different colors, uh, 20 or so, I'd probably want to think about doing it a different way. But anyway, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.